ladies and gentlemen, a man coming off of a bye week, an undefeated quarterback in the NFL, from Butte County, California, by way of the Green Bay Packers, ladies and gentlemen, quarterback, Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! 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 Okay. All right, you good, Pat? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a good shirt. I don't know. I don't know if hey, that's a really good shirt. I appreciate you for wearing that. It's good for Thanks, kickers, man. punters, and everybody. Who, uh, who is this on here? Was this modeled after you or? Yeah, both those are me. And then down to you bottom, and. Uh, no, yeah. look, look, look at those quads. Down to bottom, that's John Dornboss, the magician. I don't know if he knows that. And he's probably going to sue us now. But that he was the most A-looking long snapper that we could find on the internet. So I mean, we appreciate John Dornboss for being the A in the brand. I appreciate you for wearing that. How was the bye week? You weren't allowed to leave. You weren't allowed to do anything. What did you do? I didn't do anything. I was not allowed to leave. I had to go because. I had the COVID test every morning, just like all of our guys. And I think the positive thing, I heard you talking before I got on here about the bubble talk again. The positive thing was, you know, there's all this worry about, oh, my God, guys are getting free time, and what are they going to be doing? And we had zero testing. Green That's what we're yeah! talking about. It's going to take all of us, Aaron. It's going to take all of us. Thanks to all of us. Yeah, you're right on brand there, Pat. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, Pat, make sure you got to tell him to vote, right? Does, yeah, yeah, make sure, oh, yeah. Aaron, make sure you vote. Listen, if you don't vote, not have an Aaron Rodgers Tuesday ever again, okay? Make sure you vote. Are we not doing the show? Because isn't, isn't the, you know, it's on first Tuesday in November, right? So we're just going to skip the show. Oh, no, 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 a uh, short little uh, onside kick, you know, cool. I like from what the you did front uh, front door of the building. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was at the facility every single day, uh, testing. Um, I took some uh, some time. I took a few days off of uh, of uh, all, you know, workouts and everything, which just to make it feel more like a bye week, mm -hmm. even though I went into the facility. Smart. I think that was important. Um, but as usual, Pat, you know this age, you know. Coaches love a lot of things. Not many things more than that bonus Monday practice <laughs> after a bye week. You know? Oh, yeah. When all that grinding hard work that they've done over that, uh, that week shows up and you get to see what they've been, what they've been working on. You know? Is it a day for so. you guys to, to get back to the basics, get back to the fundamentals, and just kill each other for two and a half hours? Well, you know, this was not uh, not quite some of the ones that we were accustomed to age over the years that might have been, you know, full pads. And before they made some of the rules about, you know, a certain number of padded practices, I think it's like 14 now we can have. This Monday often was a full full padded uh, two-hour, uh, you know. We had to show, uh, you know, our toughness, which, you know, Mike's from Pittsburgh. I know you have a soft spot there, Pat. Oh, yeah. That, that grit and toughness that comes from Pittsburgh, so... We had some the bonus Mondays are pretty pretty rough. This was an hour practice. It was a lot shorter. <laughs> um, you know, it wasn't the uh, same type of intensity that we've had over the years. What was it? Self eval? Is that a self evaluation? What we can work on, or is it strictly going into next week? Just a bonus week of practice or a bonus day of practice going into this week? No, I think it's more just just clean some things up from the first four weeks for us. So we ran some plays. Uh, it was a lot of ones on ones. So it's stuff against our defense to where the stuff that they need to work on, stuff that we want to work on on offense coming out of the bye and the self scout. Um, it, again, it wasn't that much. You know, we probably had uh, 25 or 30 uh, uh, offensive plays. Um, so it wasn't like a ton of stuff. A lot of individual uh, drill work, you know, just kind of knocking the, the proverbial rust off, I guess. So. so do you guys stink? Like, what did you realize by the self evaluation? You're undefeated. There's a lot to work on still. We're only going to get better here. Well, it's, it's, you know, I said after the game, you know, the, the, we all love winning. I mean, it, you know, as a player's organization, everybody loves winning. But coaches always like holding that little, like, well, we're just not quite playing our best yet. You know, there's still some stuff to work on. 
you know, just those little adages that uh, that they can kind of you know stick in their their cigarette pocket and hold for later. <laughs> you know, like need to need to remind us we're not that good. You know, it's that whole like you know film doesn't lie stuff. It's never as great as it looks. It's never as good as it feels. You know, it's never as terrible as it feels. You know, right after the game. Um, I think that's you know that actually is true, but it also works in the favor of the coaches because even when you you know play a game, you feel like it's a complete game. They're always like, well, you know, you're only four out of five in the red zone, and you're, <laughs> you know, and you're six of eleven on third down, so you you didn't get five of those guys. You know, we can't get to, too confident now here. You know, with those percentages, even though those would lead the league at the end of the year. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we we gotta hold something over your head here. Yeah, that's kind of the way it goes, and that's. I think that's good. That you never want to be complacent, but sometimes you gotta you gotta enjoy the the little things, the winning too. I agree. Wait, why do you think coaches have such a tough time? I, I and let me know if you think this is true. When you're winning and you're playing very well, I feel like coaches get more nervous each week. Like you're four zero now. I feel like each week they're getting more and more nervous, and they're gonna tell you how terrible you are because they want to like knock you down, you know, take you down a peg, as my grandpa says. Do you, do you notice that? <laughs> Hey, do you, I mean, you know, we've had a lot of conversations over the years about this. I just think that's part of it. I think there's there's anxiety that goes with uh, with both the, the spectrums, you know, the, the the winning and losing, you know, because it can become a, a routine or a habit, um, and often that's when the complacency or on the flip side the apathy kind of sets in. Ooh. So when you're winning, the complacency uh, can set in. I mean, it doesn't set in for guys who you know take care of themselves mentally and have a good approach and kind of uh, stick to the routine um but i think it's more just coach talk a lot of times uh, you know they always they got to harp on something and when you're winning they harp on you know don't get complacent uh and it's just kind of again something they can keep in their in their little black book of coaching isms that they can say at different times during the week the cliches of coaches are the best. I mean, I just control the controllables, okay? We're going to have our blinders on, all right? <laughs> Listen, we're going to do what we do for all, all that we can do for 60 minutes here. Nobody can say anything. And then whenever you win, we can't get complacent. Obviously, when you're at the top of the mountain, the only place you can go is down. How are you going to stay up here? Nobody knows. I mean, that all that type of stuff is just insane. <laughs> what you said in there was interesting. You said, though, you gave a uh, quote about people mentally who are either healthy or in the same space. A couple weeks ago, you gave us a quote about you looking at yourself to become the best version of yourself and revolves around love do you still after a week off and maybe the routine getting changed a little bit there are you still in a great mental space and did you watch anything like maybe ted lasso during the bye week to help that entire thing out i didn't watch ted lasso come on, oh, come on. Jesus. Come on. unbelievable We're don't vote aaron out. hey don't vote don't vote on that tuesday now that i think about it no doubt no? okay <laughs> the reverse thing right now yeah 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 well no i think if you make the decision not to watch ted lasso you shouldn't decide who runs our country but oh, what, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. directly uh, related there yeah <laughs> <laughs> what did you watch did you watch anything cool you know what pat i know that you know you're a big uh, we fan so you got you know your shows you got to watch during the week yeah but i would recommend to you um i know aj watches next to nothing on tv he watches like youtube uh, videos of you know, Ultimate Warrior going on uh, the Arsenio Hall show and stuff like that <laughs> from the 90s. But well, what's another um, Chuck Berry? I did not watch oh, hardly geez. any TV over the over the bye. Now the bye felt like you know it was just really Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so I I watched probably a combined 45 minutes of television um, during those uh, those four days. I I was out in nature, just uh, hanging out in a in a you know in a tent in uh, in nature, just uh, camping on my own property. You camped out on your own property during the bye week? Yeah, I'm kidding about that. Not oh kidding. my <laughs> God! The internet would well, already. I was, you know, I was out and about. I was enjoying the, uh, enjoying the elements, uh, uh, getting to some reading and relaxing, and I just didn't didn't want to didn't want to watch a whole lot of TV. I wanted to just kind of let my mind rest. I appreciate that and respect that. Did you get a chance to watch the game last night, though? The Monday night football game between Drew and Justin Herbert. And what are your thoughts on Justin Herbert being in an interesting situation as a young quarterback? He looks like he's got it, that guy. I didn't, yeah, I didn't see a whole lot of that. Uh, it was on for a little bit with the sound off, um, which is, you know, how I've watched a lot of games on ESPN over the last few years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yes! Oh, no. <laughs> Do you have issues with everybody at ESPN or just certain people? Like, who is it? Sorry, I sorry. like a lot of people at ESPN. I really do. I love Kenny Mayne. Kenny's one of my all-time favorites. Love Kenny as well. Um, 
No, but uh, you know, I enjoy uh, I enjoy watching uh, watching football. I enjoy watching you know some Thursday night stuff and and Sunday night and Monday night. But I enjoy also listening to you know music during the games and not necessarily all the commentary at times. But uh, as far as Justin, I mean, I enjoy watching him in college. He comes from the greatest uh, the greatest conference, the Conference of Champions, as Bill Walton uh, loves to say all the time, the Pac-12. It used to be the Pac-10. Before that, it was the Pac-8. Yeah, Pat, Conference of Champions. Still a, still a conference, too, by the way. Hey, still, yeah. A, yeah. still a conference, still playing football, that Conference of Champions. Hey, don't take that away from you your answer. You could only dream about, about calling the game of Bill Walton, by the way. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I completely that, agree. I completely agree. I'm that not, would be amazing. I, I would love that, to have you three. Uh, <laughs> you on the play-by-play and AJ and Bill going back and forth. So. <laughs> oh, that would be, that'd be quite the tandem. Um, but no, I was, I enjoyed watching him in college and big arm. Um, you know, it seemed like last night, I didn't, like I said, didn't see the whole game, but it seemed like he was making, uh, some, some pretty amazing throws and he had four touchdowns and no picks. Uh, they've lost, I saw a stat this morning, like 13 games by one score, one score. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's tough. You know, it's, what is that Aaron? Um, you know, it's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's it's offense sometimes not being able to score in the two minute, or it's defense not being able to stop them in the two minute. It's uh, you know like last night, you know they moved the ball down. Um, yeah, big receiver had a big kick. I saw that in the game, a big big catch, and then you know the kicker missed it by a couple inches. You know if that's a couple inches more inside the post, it probably nicks it and goes in, and they win the game. You know it's just uh, just how it goes sometimes. The game of inches, as you know. Patrick and uh, oh yeah, uh-huh. uh, but I think he's, he started off you know throwing the ball really well. I feel bad for Tyrod. I've known Tyrod for a lot of years. I think he's one of the NFL good guys, um, and he's you know not had a ton of opportunities to be a long term starter. Um, so I do feel bad for what happened to him. Um, you know, obviously picking Herbert so high, you know, at some point he's going to be the guy. But uh, you know, for him to step in the way he has, especially you know when he found out. Five minutes before game time, he's going to start his first his first start. Yeah, he's been pretty impressive. Agree. Hey, Aaron, do you, do you consider yourself a good talent evaluator? Hmm. Mm. Uh, yeah, I do. Really? Okay. Uh, let me let me ask you a question then, because we have all these young quarterbacks playing very well. If you were the GM or owner of a team, which someday you may be, who knows? Um, how long do you think it takes until you know if your franchise quarterback is your franchise quarterback? Like, hey, did we hit on this dude? How many games could you tell just from a practice? Like, what do you need? I don't know, H. I mean, I think that's a hard question. I think first and foremost, you have to have certain skills. You know, I think uh, you can see a guy on the field. Can I stop you real quick? I think when they were talking about some younger – I've heard them – like, when guys come in and play at other places, they'll say something. But supposedly, scouts said about you, they're like, well, what did Aaron Rodgers look like his first day of practice? And they're like, he was slinging it. That dude could play. And they knew from the day you walked – into Lambeau, hey, this dude is our guy whenever Brett is done. Like, so people knew that with you. Can you tell that with everybody? I mean, I think it just depends on the personality. I think with some guys, probably so. I mean, it's it's how you step in the huddle. It's your control. It's the moxie. It's confidence. But there's just some things you kind of boxes. I feel like you have to check. And, and one of them is being able to sling it. You know, I think um, I was talking to somebody <laughs> earlier. I think just being able to, to, to throw the ball at a high level, it can make up for a lot of different things. Like, you look at Lamar, and as talented as Lamar is athletically, I mean, the guy's one of the fastest guys in the league. But you watch him in college, and he could sling that thing. I mean, he could really sling the ball. Um, Big-time arm. I mean, throwing up 75, 80 yards. And, and um, so he just knew, like, one, he's supremely athletic. Two, he can really throw it. So, like, footwork-wise, he's going to figure it out, you know with coaching and getting into an offense and time of his feet with the drops, like to me, that wouldn't have been a big issue. You just see the athletic ability and things you just can't coach. Now you interesting to see like his personality, how he's in the huddle. And obviously that's all worked out. He's an MVP now. And, and he's had a nice, really nice start to his career, but, but just having kind of the basics, uh, being able to move a little bit and extend plays, that's kind of the league we're in now. I mean, there's just less and less kind of statues back there. At quarterback, like there was maybe in the early late '90s and early 2000s, um, you know, big arm guys who just kind of stood in the pocket. Now there's a lot more guys who extend plays and move around. But being able to, to make those NFL throws, 
a lot of times it takes kind of seeing seeing that in person in a camp, you know, throwing an NFL ball. Hey, what year is this for you playing? Not in the NFL, but playing? 13. How do you – so, like Andrew Luck, for instance, played for eight years or nine years, and he was good for those nine years, and then obviously it wore on him. He got – and he didn't want to do whatever happened. I don't know what happened. He retires 12 days before the season or whatever. Joe Burrow, we're watching him right now. He's just getting killed. Like, it is just. And I would assume some of it is potentially on him for holding on to the ball too long or rolling out of the pocket the wrong way or anything like that. But how do you stay consistent for so Like, how have you stayed consistent so long? Is it like every day you have to have that coach think, like, I can get better and better? Or is it like a mental thing? What is it, you think, to be able to stay at a high level for the longest period of time? Because right now we're talking about all these young quarterbacks. Kyler Murray. He had the first two weeks MVP conversation and two weeks he was down. Then one week he was up. Talk about Patrick Mahomes. He's been great here for three, four years, but who knows if he's going to be able to last for 20 years. Like how do you maintain, and this is all credit to you and guys that have been able to play for a long, Tom, Peyton, Brett, how do you maintain that high level for so long? Is it like super competitive? Like you have to be a, an ultra competitive human being to be a quarterback uh, for, for so long. Or what is it you think if you had to put a finger to it? Well, I think it starts to being hyper competitive. You know, I, I think that's a, a trait with all the all the long time uh, great players is you just have. Uh, I just I love to compete, and a lot of times it's competing at yourself. You know, it's it's, it's finding ways to make drills competitive, uh, meeting room competitive. Just uh, you know, just fill that uh, that need to to compete in something. I think the most important thing is you have to be self motivated, and again, that's that may seem like a you know, standard statement, but it's not. I mean, not every player is self-motivated. I think, you know, a coach of ours a while back said something I thought was interesting about the difference between uh, motivation and inspiration. You can get inspiration from a lot of people in your life or messages, movies, songs, but true motivation comes from within. And I don't think every every player or person really has that. I think it's something that, that you – I mean, I think we all have it, but not everybody uses it. It taps into that, and I think – the great players, the great business people, the great uh, hosts, Thank you. Uh, the great teams like yourself, <laughs> you and the boys. Yeah, yeah, you have thing. to be self-starters. You know, you wake up in the morning and you think, "What am I going to do today that's epic? You know, what am I going to do today that's going to change my life, my sphere? You know, my my circle of influence. What what can I do today that's going to be meaningful? And, and you know, and it's not some like magical formula every day. You got to you know you know, come up with some idea or some earth shaking thing. It's just like the first, the, the, you know, every great journey begins with the first step, right? And the first step sometimes is getting out of bed. The first step is making a list of things you need to do. The first step is, uh, I mean, look at Alex Smith and his rehab. Like, you know, the first step was just like maybe taking a step. I mean, actually probably way before that, you know, and, Again, just to segue, just seeing him out there was was really special, and seeing his wife and kids in the stands that was an, that was an incredible moment. But Alex is a guy who I'm this is, you know, he's a self motivated guy. I mean, how do you, you have to be to come back from something like that? I mean, the the toughness that he has, the will, the grit, the competitiveness, and that's what the you know the great competitors, the great athletes, the great. Uh, business people that's what they have aj i don't want to i just ask this question real quick and then you can go uh at what point did you stop hating alex smith <laughs> I, I never i never hated alex I, really well hold on hold on hold on so there was never like a oh this guy goes to the team that i grew up a fan of number one overall pick and here i am having a draft night that everybody remembers still with that suit it's just one of the you never hated him it was just one of those things like well that's the niners decision not alex's decision i gotta do what i gotta do yeah, I mean, it had nothing to do with uh, with him. You know, obviously, we both wanted to go number one. Uh, you know, they, they decided to, to pick him. Uh, I couldn't hate him. Every time we hung out, I enjoyed him. You know, I, I really enjoyed his personality. We had similar stories. You know, he had uh, one scholarship offer coming out of high school. I had zero. You know, like we were our fir- my first uh, extensive time on the field at Cal was against Utah at Utah, and he was a first-year starter. So, you know, we, our careers really mirrored the, uh, each other early on. And, um, you know, just being around this game for so long, you pull for the older guys and <laughs> pull for the guys that, that you were drafted with. And 
one of those guys is Fitzy. You had a great week last week. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Fitz Magic's getting hot over there. Get- you know, I've really enjoyed watching him play over the years and just the stuff that he's done. His his wit and intelligence, uh, I love it. Uh, he's just a really interesting guy. And, um, you know, just like him and Alex and all the guys that came out with us, you know, it's a, you know, Dan Orlovsky, who I believe is, he's, has he been on your show yet or he's coming on? No, nah, he's on the show. Yeah, he's, by the way, he's been breaking down a lot of Aaron Rodgers film right now. A lot of Aaron Rodgers film right now on ESPN. He's breaking down your brain on ESPN right now, and it's doing numbers for him. So uh, keep Yeah, it. he's the new ESPN expert, isn't he? Yeah, he's the guy. He draws <laughs> X's and circles and does this stuff. And he even has this thing on an iPad that shows, like, the vision. Like, look, he's looking this way, and he's doing that. He's the guy. He's the guy that teaches the football. That's, that's awesome. Do you hate him? You hate Dan Orlovsky? I'll let him know. I left Dan. No, Dan was my. He was the. We met at the Elite Eleven quarterback camp in uh, 2004 in the springtime. It was him, Derek Anderson, Kyle Orton, uh, Brad Smith. If you remember Brad Smith. Oh yeah. yeah. And Jason White from Oklahoma, the Heisman Trophy winner. What a legendary crew, right? There. It was. Uh, it was a good group, man. A couple <laughs> wild guys in there. You can probably imagine which two were the wild ones. <laughs> Uh, but we had a we had a good time. That was a fun trip. Hey, how's Jordan Love doing? We don't hear much about him. How is Jordan Love doing? He's doing well. He's doing really well. You know, I think this is uh, you know this is a good time for him uh, to learn, um, to see what it looks like, to see what the weeks uh, of preparation look like, and just kind of soak it all up. You know, I, obviously he was in his shoes a long time ago. I. You know, this is the time I really feel like you start settling in. Now, it's different because we had a preseason and I got to play in the preseason and, you know, you kind of got to get your feet wet a little bit. But once the season starts, you know, you kind of settle into being the backup and or being a backup and, and going through the process and, and figuring out for your own preparation what it looks like, listening, watching the, the way the week unfolds. Uh, seeing how the starter goes about his business. So it's it's a good learning time for him. And um, he's enjoying it. He's opening up more personality-wise. And it's been, uh, it's been fun. We saw you throwing snaps to him in the training camp or whatever. And there's always this conversation that's like, when a young guy gets drafted into a position and there's a vet, the vet has to do everything they can to prepare this rookie to be in the NFL. And if they don't, they're a bad vet, they're a bad leader. And it's like, well, the vet also has to worry about doing their job and moving forward. It's not like they're being asked to be the coach. And I would assume you kind of took that. It's like, hey, if you ask me questions, I'll help them out. I would love to help them out, but I also have to worry about me. How have you been able to balance that with Jordan? Like, how have you, because obviously that was a massive talking, but I mean, let alone Mad Mel and the amount of attention that got on draft night, but coming away from, night number one of the draft, that was the only conversation. It was like, okay, they got Aaron, now they got Jordan, how will these two get along, blah, blah, blah. And then we saw videos surfacing, it's like, just fine. Aaron's a human, he knows this isn't Jordan Love's decision, this is somebody else's decision, but how have you been balancing that whole mentor, but also I have to go win another MVP at the same exact time? Well, thankfully I've, I've, I've been through that process, so I know what it looks like, and I know what it sounds like and feels like when the starter says, it's not my job to get the, the next guy ready. Uh, <laughs> which, which, far, which far be said. Now, what he said was, was, was the truth. Now, the way it was said and the context and everything, the way it was taken out of that context, uh, probably didn't reflect his own feelings. But basically what he was saying was, look, I have to get ready to play, and the quarterback coach is going to get the next guy ready as well. That's his job. Um, I mean, th- that is – the situation, you know, Lou Getze is our quarterback coach and he helps all of us out. There's, you know, plenty of time in, in uh, the meeting room and drill work and during the process of game planning for a great conversation. And going through that process, I realized how important some of those conversations would have been to have, you know, to, to talk about, you know, what it feels like, what the preparation looks like, uh, what to expect, what I need from my backups, you know, which I think those are all important conversations to have. And, you know, and I have those conversations with Tim and Jordan all the time. Um, you know, I talked to Jordan after the second week, and, um, you know, I won't get into exactly what we said, but it was after the game, and it was kind of feeling the just the environment around uh, a locker room after a win and just the special energy that's in there. And, and just remind them just to soak it all up, you know, because that's those are the moments that, 
that really make you feel great about what you're doing uh, because that's the culmination of the week of preparation and, and the process. So that's the fun part to, to, to think about, to start to daydream about when, you know, one day it's going to be, it's going to be your opportunity to do that. And, um, you know, he's been doing a good job, you know, and, and again, you know, they've, they've wanted to make stories. They being, you know, the, the media who's so sensitive. If I, you know, tell them they write clickbait stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh, God, it was a bit sensitive last week though. I saw a lot of yeah, that. But it's, that's what they want. You know, it's a Matt and I would never get along, you know, and, and okay, that story, it looks like it's gone away that, you know, that Jordan and I won't get along. That story has gone away now. And now it's that, you know, now let's give the organization credit because they picked the guy. So that's obviously why I'm playing well. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's, it's just funny how they can win, win just about every statement they make in order to, you know, to make it fit their narrative. Aaron, uh, first and foremost, hope you enjoyed your bye week. Yeah, Aaron. Yeah, um, Aaron we thank you. We hope you had yep. a great bye mm-hmm. week. As we're getting closer to Halloween here, I'm just curious. Uh, what is your favorite Halloween costume Ooh. that you've ever worn? Mm-hmm. And uh, do you have any maybe suggestions for me? Because I'm not a huge Halloween guy. Well, first of all, you have the great start to an outfit, which is a mustache. Yeah. So you can go a number of different ways. I, mm-hmm. I would say that uh, when I broke my collarbone in 2017, I was really thinking about I was doing nothing. I was pretty bored. I mean, what can I do with a broken collarbone uh, to kind of look my best? You know, is there anything I can do to, you know, feel good about the situation I was in? And one of my favorite movies is called The Life Aquatic. Ah, oh, Steve Zuzu. Wes Anderson film, Steve Zuzu, and that's the outfit that I did. And I spent a lot of time on it trying to get it to look just right, and I felt amazing about it. <laughs> what I realized, though, Ty, in that moment was not many people – who play on my team have ever heard of Wes Anderson. Yeah, I had no idea right there. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> don't even know so what when doing. I showed up at the Halloween party that year, AJ can't talk, it's great, he's muted. <laughs> 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 but when I showed up at the Halloween party that year, I mean, there were a lot of like, uh, who are you? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Did you see Sue? Have you seen? Yeah, okay. I don't worry about it. I'm just like a sailor guy. That's tough, though, because all the effort that you put in there just kind of got spit on because nobody knew the reference. That's tough. A, you know, a sweet pick. I believe it was with this similar background that I'm using right now. Um, and I felt really good about my favorite outfit. But I would definitely look up some of the great mustache characters from some of your favorite movies and, and maybe go in that direction. I'm looking at a photo of you. I have no fucking idea what that human is, by the way. It look, you look good, though. Like, you definitely committed to said outfit, for sure. Yeah, throw, throw it on the screen. Uh, we got to find it. We got to send it over. You're, I got it. I got it. Yeah, we'll it's a great, it. great, we'll great film. We'll it really is. Yeah, is it? Nobody's seen it. True. AJ, what do you got? <laughs> better, yeah. It's better to have a, a costume that, you know, your, your younger players don't know what you're doing than some of his ones he had in the past, which I know he probably wouldn't want to leak out there. Like, do you have any... Halloween costumes you've worn that you don't want the public to get a, a hold of any pictures? What are those, Aaron? Oh, <sighs> uh, I don't know. It's, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. I can't say I've had some great costumes every single year. But um, one of the all-time best, though, I will say this. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. This is Way what we're here back, for. I had, uh, this was like 2006 or seven. Long time, long time. Uh, best friend who goes by the nickname Papa age knows him Uh, him and I rocked the dumb and dumber suits Mm. with the top hats (laughs) and the canes and this was in 2000 and age I feel like you were there was it 2007 or 8 where was the party oh and we went downtown dressed like that it was back when (laughs) Downtown Green Bay. Downtown Green Bay. (laughs) Downtown Green Bay. Ed Ed Kelly's and uh, what else? Do you guys have a Halloween party out there? Do you host a Halloween party? Are you a guy that... We have. We won't this year, but... But anyway, that Dumb and Dumber, that was the best uh, the best costume, probably. Are you a guy, though, that would host a team event at your house? Oh, for sure. That tells me a lot about you, but... I just want to let you know that tells me a lot about you in a good yeah, way. I posted, I posted Thanksgiving the last uh, three or four years. Oh, wow. Christmas party. Oh, terrible guy, yeah. though. You know? yeah. You're a terrible guy. Halloween last year was though. great. We set up a, an awesome deal at the uh, at age. You've been there at the train museum. They set up a big haunted house there. Train museum. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, you your- Green Bay. It's pretty creepy. They set up this whole 
big deal. It's what's it called? Uh, Boring. Yeah, <laughs> called what? Pet? A train museum sounds like the most miserable life of mine. I, no. I mean, I couldn't Pet. even. Fathom. At the train museum, they take it over. They make it into a whole haunted house. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a Halloween thing, okay? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I want to go to a train museum. <laughs> train artifacts. You yeah. know, when I started hearing train you can museum. Use that a little bit. You can get, get a little more culture there. No, I get stopped by a train on my way home every single day. I'm about done what with. If, what if the wife wants to go to a train museum? She does, and that's why I married her. But the, the, <laughs> the, thing about, the thing about the train museum is that just kind of filled the narrative that I had about Green Bay Packers. No tour at all. You guys are going to train museums. I was just, I was starting to think like this team just is not. I don't even know how it even functions. But you're saying you took over the train museum, made it awesome. So that's completely no, wrong. Tour at all with all the stuff AJ was taking for so many years. Oh, AJ, oh. what were you taking, AJ? Excuse me, what were you taking over there, AJ? Oh. Wait, what did he say? It's all muted and everything. I didn't hear him. He, he mentioned Tordal? Yeah. <laughs> I, Pat doesn't believe me that they don't give Tordal shots there. They don't, yeah, they don't give Tordal shots. But Age would drink this this green legume drink that <laughs> I'm sure was legal, but it made his body just, I mean, he had the worst gas you could oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, And sit next to him in those meetings. Oh. All right, Aaron, can I, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Twitter for one question and then a phone call for one question. Is that cool? And then we'll let you out of here on this beautiful yeah, sure. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Um, yeah. okay. Question is, on today? what's that? Is that a chain you're wearing today? What's the significance of that? I don't know. To be honest with you, I, I woke up this morning, I saw it on my bathroom thing and I was like, I'm going to put it on. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest, but I have 0.09% Italian in me. I found that out from a 23 in me and this kind of maybe is the 0.09%. You know what I mean? How much Pittsburgh you got in you? 100%, Paul. <laughs> hey, down there, a little rust belt. Let's go to a phone call here. Let's go to, you want to go to Arizona, Virginia, North Dakota, Ohio, or Cleveland? North Dakota. All right, North Ooh. Dakota. Dan in North Dakota, what's going on, brother? What's up, Aaron? Oh, my God. Thank you for picking my call. I am a huge fan. I've been a, you're the one that got me into football. Oh, you. You're my absolute you. favorite player of all time. You. And I just want to ask what you this think guy. Brown or Equanimous St. Brown coming back from the IR does for the receiving core. Great question, Dan. You knew North Dakota was going to be pumped, by the way. I, I, I like North Dakota was going to bring it, Dan. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, talking about EQ. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly if they're going to bring him off. I'm not, I haven't seen transactionally. I know that you can start practicing after a certain time, but. Um, you know, EQ a couple of years ago when he was a rookie, you know, played uh, a nice role for us later in the season. You know, he's a really good straight line speed guy, but he really improved his route running over his rookie year. Now, last year, obviously, we lost the whole year due to his injury, but um, he's definitely struggled with some injuries in the last 18 months, which I know has been really frustrating for him. But he's a super talented guy. Um, just we're going to need to see some stuff in practice, I think, you know, just to get him uh, kind of. The, to knock the rust off but uh talent level he's extremely talented you know he's, he's got great hands he catch the ball with his hands which is nice um but great straight line speed really good route runner um so it'd be nice to nice to get him back if it's this week or in the future um but you know even maybe more exciting than eq even though that is exciting is 17 coming back. <laughs> Let's go. Devontae wow. Adams, who wanted to play, obviously, a week before the bye week, but they sat him in lieu of hopefully health down the road 100%. Now, i, I got to go back to your answer there where you said the guy catches the ball with his hands. Do you know that about your wide receivers, and does that change where you throw the ball to people if they're more of a body catcher or hands catcher or anything like that? I mean, I, I think you try and tell them this stuff, but it does change the way you feel about certain routes that they run, for sure. Like certain uh, you know routes that they run uh, – and the type of ball you can throw them, yeah. You know, any anybody that catches the ball with their hands it just changes the whole catch rate. It changes the whole confidence you have in throwing them every single type of route. But body catchers, it's just a little more difficult on certain routes. you got to be a little more precise. Um, a lot of times what people don't realize either is a, um, a person that catches with their body changes the way that the, f that the football looks accuracy-wise. You throw a ball... Hmm. on a guy's front number that he catches with their hands, it looks like a perfect throw. If he's a body catcher, it might hit him on his back number and look like it was slightly behind him. Mm. People don't quite understand how that changes, you know, the way you throw the football. Um, 
but anybody that naturally catches the ball with their hands probably gets a few more looks. Pro Football Focus doesn't know that either, do they? That's what Pro Football Focus doesn't know right oh. there. They put a lot of misses on those body catches. When they get, it's not really on a quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> not, Hold on, why are you dogging Pro Football Focus? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm giving excuses for Pro Football Focus because these are things that they don't know. They're not privy to information. Everybody expects them to be perfect all the time. They don't know this. What do you want from Pro Football Focus? <laughs> um, this tw- this question's from Twitter. Guy's name's Michael Jackson. Not that Michael Jackson. Another <laughs> Michael. This is a Caucasian. From birth, it seems, Caucasian <laughs> Michael Jackson from Florida at M. Jackson asks, what is your favorite place to get away and relax in the off season? I like this question because what? You almost got stranded in Peru or something like that yeah. right before this quarantine. You seem to be a world traveler. Where is a place that you enjoy going to the most? I haven't repeated a whole lot of different places. Uh, I enjoy going down to Southern California. Pat, mm-hmm. and oh, yeah. As you thankfully yeah. let everybody know, Malibu. No, I didn't let everybody know. Whoa. Thirty million dollar house, Malibu, TMZ. I didn't say that. This is information that's just out there. I'd like everybody to be privy to in the same yeah. conversation. Yeah, allegedly. Um, but I, I really enjoy. Did that. you just walk in with cash, by the way? Were you like, yeah, I'll take this house, and by the way, there you go. Get the hell out. I'm moving in today. Pat, stop moving around because then they got to zoom out on your picture to get your whole body frame and see as you're wearing pants, not shorts. Oh, you are wearing shorts. Yeah, yeah. Come on, bro. Oh, you know the show deal. the quads off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. You're looking good, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> another, another wrestling bout coming up or what? Well, I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, I was very sore the day after, but last year I turned into a six foot one, 275 slob, <laughs> and I can't have that happen this fall. You know what I mean? Sidebar, before I answer your question, did you really wear number 40 at West Virginia? Yeah, it was my uh, GPA, my favorite drink. (laughs) 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 Go ahead, I'm sorry. (laughs) I didn't get to pick, obviously. Ended on that right there. (laughs) No, 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 Uh, I I need to know where you go. Oh, no, more? More? Yeah, yeah, need to know where you go. Look, I I would say this. There's places that I would like to go, um, you know, in the future. Uh, And one of them is Egypt. Ooh, okay. Always been uh, a lover of history. Egypt has some of the most fascinating history in the world. Obviously, you know, China obviously has some super, super old uh, history, but I, I believe, as does Graham Hancock, that actually Egypt might have some of the oldest uh, kind of history that we can go and see based on his own personal view of the age of the Sphinx, and the pyramids, and I'd love to see that in person, uh, constantly looking at kind of the status of that area. It's been hot, as they say, for a while, you know, not as safe as, as we would like, but that's definitely a place that I'm uh, going to get to uh, sooner rather than later. Hey, so how do you think, uh, I guess, when when were the pyramids and, and the Sphinx when were they constructed? Also, like, what kind of technology did they use to put those together with the precision, like laser cuts? And we know they didn't have lasers back then. It was aliens. Say it. Yeah, it was definitely aliens. Bingo. Yeah, there it is, by the way. <laughs> that's Dave, the I know that's what you wanted me to say. You know, wanted to kind of like put me on an answer or something, but I have no problem saying it. Pat, Pat agrees with me. I know Ty does as well. What do they look like? Right. What do these aliens look like? Were they just out of this? Obviously, they are out of this world. How strong were they? Like, What do they have? And to follow up to that question from AJ, all the videos that we're getting from the Pentagon, these aliens are like this tall. Mm-hmm. How, did they put the blocks on their back? How, how did how did this entire thing happen, Aaron, in your eyes, if you had to was, speculate? Yeah, there, I think there was a race of giant aliens, many uh, who look like uh, Dennis Rodman hybrids. Oh. Um, oh. And, Good rebounder. No, but... Uh, I don't know. I, all I know is that there's a lot of wonders around the world that don't have great explanations for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. still don't. Last question before we let you go. Earlier in the show, Ryan Clark told a story about <laughs> you throwing a slant to Greg Jennings, I believe, whenever he was lined up at three in the Super Bowl. And he talks about and I'm sure you've heard it because he said he talks about it on a regular occasion. He studied for two weeks, and it was in 100 percent. Or any time that you guys were in this particular look, Greg Jennings was getting the rock. And in the Super Bowl, as soon as the ball was snapped, he just started sprinting directly to the place where the ball was going. And you threw it over his hands just by a little bit in front of Troy, I guess. 
and it was a touchdown. And he says that you looked at him and you said, hey, 2-5, instead of calling him by name, which he thought was pretty disrespectful. You said, hey, 2-5, which might be a thing that you do. I'm not sure. And then you went like this to him about how close he was. <laughs> and it, it, is, it is still buried in his soul to this day. There is a lot of hate in his heart because of that. Is it true from your side of the story? He's obviously recycling the same story over and over because I did see that he had said that and that he wanted to punch me in the face. <laughs> at some point. Um, I think that's a little, you know, harsh. Uh, For sure. I can't say I'm a, you know, I'm a pacifist, so I, I wouldn't welcome that. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily be searching that out, and, and maybe we can have a conversation before that, before it gets to you know, some sort of violence. I just don't believe in the use of violence without, you know, previous conversations. Smart. But I will say that they were, you know, they were playing cover four. I don't think he sprinted at the snap. We ran, you know, all go special. And he, you know, kind of, you know, slowly made his way over from the back <laughs> safety, clue in on number three, who was going vertical. Um, you know, kind of snuck it in there. It was a really good coverage. Um, I wasn't trying to be a dick about <laughs> close, but I don't know. I thought it was like a little competitive banter. Uh, I didn't realize that, you know, that stuck with him. It's a grudge from 20, you know, February 6, 2011. Still- <laughs> <laughs> I would say to Ryan, hey, buddy, you know, like, let it go. Uh, we got to let you go. Ladies oh. and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers Tuesday concludes on a Super Bowl story from 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, good luck this week. MVP candidate, undefeated quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Let's go. Appreciate, you. Appreciate you, Aaron. You're Woo. the man. Right, Love we- you, Aaron.